today's demo is, is not going to be with delay, so nobody's going to get hit by pine wood. That's, that's the good thing. What I'm going to do today is uh, show you some what I know about piercing. Now, I'm a beginner at this, but I've learned some things, and I want to share that. One of the things, uh, on the Internet, there's a guy by the name of Glenn Cox, and he does a very good video on how to get equipment, and I probably watched it two or three times. This is the handout that uh, you can download online, and I'll pass it around. If anybody wants to keep this particular copy, feel free. I surely don't need it at this point in time. I'm going to start on this side instead of that side, because I'm over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, most, you know, most of my wood's free. It comes from my property uh, or surrounding properties, my neighbor's property. I get ash. I get a little bit of oak, not a whole lot. I get maple, I get box elder, poplar, a little, little bit of walnut and things like that. Most of it has very little figure. You know, I mean, it's got some, and they even got a piece of elm too. Uh, it's got some, but it, you know, you can turn a nice thing. I get cherry also, forgot that one. But, but it, it, you know, it, it, I don't get these maple burls like all you guys get. I'd have to buy them, and I just don't have the money for the five dollars extra on dues or burls. So, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so I'm kind of cut out of that market, so to speak. So I, I use what I have. So I like to try to embellish things. So I'm going to tell you what I know about piercing. Uh, I do have a couple of uh, sample things I did so you can kind of get an idea but first one I'm going to show you is how you set up this whole system now uh, you start out you got to have a compressor and I would uh, say one bigger than this I'll turn this on when I get ready to go no sense in doing it right now uh, for the compressor then, you know, so you got an air in so what I did here I had a couple of those red things you get from Harbor Freight for water because my compressor is terrible about water uh, they didn't work too well, so I bought this one, which was like 550 at Harbor Freight. And I believe this uh, this is a water separator also, and this is a regulator from Harbor Freight, and it was $20. I bought a bunch of little fittings. Some of them I had. I had that cross. Uh, I had that piece there. Probably spent about 15 bucks on on fittings. You know, I'm just they add up in little brass fittings, especially you know Menards. The regulator came from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's got a 40 micron filter, and I'm guessing that's a 40 micron filter. Seems to be adequate. The better the filter, the better you're going to be. Uh, so anyway, you connect these two together, and you need the second regulator because uh, I'll show you that when we get started. But you can't run off with just your compressor regulator. You're going to need a separate regulator to control this because these uh, hand pieces are very sensitive to pressure. I have an off on switch. Six dollars from eBay China, free shipping, about three weeks time. <laughs> you know, uh, more fittings. Uh, got the gauge off eBay, US by the way. Uh, it was only about four dollars and that included shipping. I don't know how they sell this stuff, you know. Uh, here's where I differ from the handout. Uh, and I'll explain that when I get to the rest of it, but I've got a small uh, needle valve here What this so my main air to my handpiece is coming from here and my uh, air that I'm using to like clear things away is coming from here Okay and Now we we'll get to the handpiece For the handpiece you're going to need a couple of things This is a dental handpiece is for what they call a two-hole uh, handpiece uh, and I use both holes. In the handout, uh, the guy there takes and he drills a 76 hole from from here into there, and then he takes a number 80 drill and drills a hole that connects these two together and solders this up. That's uh, what he does. I figure, you know, an 80 drill is 13,000. I can see me just breaking that off, plus I didn't have one. So that's why I went to the little needle valve. And that way I can control the pressure whatever I want. Uh, so I did that. Uh, on the end of it, I just glued two pieces of this kind of tubing, this hard tubing in. So I could use my 
cheap quick disconnects more fittings like I say part of that $15 mm -hmm. fitting seems like I was always buying fittings so that's that's so I can connect it and I just have to push them in the little tube goes into the bottom one. And the large goes into the top. And what's the two tubes for? One of them will provide pressure to the turbine. These hand pieces have a little turbine in them. And in this particular hand piece, they sent me a spare one. Uh, and you can see it in that case. There ain't much to them. These hand pieces, you know, they have the connector where you, I'll just screw that on the two holes. One of them will provide air that will kind of blow away dust and smoke and things like that. Uh, and, you know, well, keeps it out. Like a blow gun. Yeah. And the other one's turning the tool. The other one's turning the tool. Okay. These tools, these hand pieces are regular dentist hand pieces. Now, when you go on eBay, you'll see all these disclaimers about FDA and licenses and all that. Just forget it. These people sell to anybody. Uh, <laughs> They get around it <clears throat> because what they're called, they're called uh, dual uh, dual use items. They can be used for something other than a dentist. Although if anybody wants me to, I can <laughs> give you something. These hand pieces, uh, this one here is what they call 45 degree. They make others that are more straight, about a 20 degree. Everybody says don't get those kind because they'll kill your hand trying to do this kind of work. 45 degree is, is good. Straight up and down is better. NSK is the uh, manufacturer of these things. And there's, some, there's a few others out there, the main one. NSK actually makes one for, for woodworking. Uh, goes straight, you know, straight up and down, so it's probably the most ideal thing. High torque. This one's not a high torque. I've seen reference to high torque, but I haven't, I, I never did find one, so to speak. Uh, that one's about 600 bucks. So five to $600. So it, it was a little bit out of my price range again. This one, actually I bought it off Amazon. It was $54 and it included the spare turbine. Hmm. So this, this is kind of like the main part that I've got in it. Uh, these dental hand pieces, there's two methods to holding the burr. There's the push button type, which is what this one is, and then there's a little wrench type. People kind of think maybe the wrench type is better, but most people have never had a problem with this push button type. And this is where the burr will go. This is just a broken one. I did a few of those. It's in there now just, a, just as a holder. Uh, this hand piece, the turbine drives a little LED. It's right there. Uh, it's a little LED, and that really helps, especially, you know, for certain parts of what you're doing. So it's got a nice little LED in there. So now i got, you know, everything I, I need as far as the air. Uh, I'll stick this back on there. The one good thing would be about the way the guy did it in there as far as drilling the hole, you'd only need the one small tube. These are uh, real pliable. But I haven't had a real problem, you know, using the whole thing just put together like it is. Is this pancake compressor the? Huh? Is this compressor is that the normal size you use when? No, I use a twenty-gallon, five-horsepower, and it'll run it. It'll cycle, but it won't. It'll. It, it can make more pressure than than this thing will require. Mm -hmm. I can get it back together. How many PSI you run on that? The PSI on that is very critical. Uh, they give it to you in KP, which converts basically to 32 to 36 PSI. These turbines and these little things spin at 440,000 RPM. So they're moving. You know, you look at your Dremel at 30,000, it's kind of moving, but these things are moving, and you'll see the difference between trying to use this and a Dremel when I get into some of the wood. But they go at 440,000. The uh, burrs, you get these on eBay. These are small little things. I think 20 of them is $18. Uh, they're carbide. Uh, I'll show you how to clean them 
when I get going also. What size is the shank? Huh? What size is the shank diameter? 1.59 millimeters, I believe. Yeah. Okay. They're all standard. Uh -huh. they're, they're, I haven't seen any that work 1.59. I think that's the number. Uh, 1.59 millimeters. There's all kinds of burrs, though. You know, you can get uh, uh, the one I like the best. This one here is what they call 169. I don't like that one the best. Uh, it's got the just the straight things. He's got pictures of the, these burrs in the back of that handout. The other one I like better is this one, which is the 699. And it's, it's got like little knobs on it, uh, more, more aggressive, so to speak. And for what I was doing, I liked it a little bit better. It seems to be a little bit better when you're trying to get rid of the burn, and I'll show you about that also. So these, you know, these are the parts. And these, I also bought these things. These are flap sanders. Uh, in the handout, he goes through how you can take like a, uh, a piece from a copier, put it on the wood, and then use uh, acetone or xylitol to transfer the image on the wood so you can kind of go around it. That only works if you got a laser printer. Doesn't work on an inkjet. I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't do anything. But if you got a laser printer, you can kind of do that. The other thing you can do if you really want to transfer an image, and I've seen this done, like somebody will take a platter and they'll take like a, an old barn or something like that picture. They'll print it on wax paper and then put it on there and rub it off and then, you know, coat over it. So it's, so it's a black and white image of a, like an old barn, you know, on there. It's kind of cool. I never have tried that, though, but I have seen it. So these are all the parts that get us going. I guess i got to turn this air compressor on now. Uh, so give me a few minutes for it to build up pressure. I got some wood here. So we will be using wood even though we're not using the lathe. These are little kind of depressors. They're 30,000 thick. These are tongue depressors. Uh, 62,000 thick or 16th and 32nd. Uh, I cut this piece. It's 100,000 thick. I got 125 and 250. You know, and I'm going to go through it and do something on these, and I'll pass some of it around. This is really simple to do. <laughs> uh, and I hope it doesn't take that long to recycle it. The first thing I'm going to do, I backed off this compressor, and I'm going to turn off my, my bleed air. And I'm going to turn my valve on, bring it up to 35, and then get me some bleed air uh, and see how much I drop, and then I'm going to. Uh, bring this back up to, to 36 because I know with the bleed air 36 is my maximum pressure for the turbine but with my bleed air I'm going to be under that even though my gauge is going to stay 36 here. this is why you need a secondary gauge you can never do it all fair you don't really want to I don't know how these things overspeed I worked in the aircraft industry and you don't want an overspeed on one of them I can tell you they go boom I've seen it <laughs> Alright, so let's see what happens. Alright, I'm 25. Yeah. Gotta go. Alright, I'm 30 PSI. You're freaking me out. Very quiet. It's been in 440,000. So now I'm going to get me a little air. It looks like I dropped maybe a half a PSI and I got plenty of air. I'm going to bring it back up to about 35 and a half. Well, like I say, these things work pretty good. I put these pencil grips on there because I couldn't hold this thing, you know, very well. But anyway, I'll try to where people can see it. Wow. Uh, do it on this side. <laughs> that works pretty good on that real thin stuff. You can really get done quick. It gets a little bit harder on this one.
saw how difficult that last one was. Hey, Bill. Yes. Yeah. The question came up about whether your tips tend to clog very badly or not. Really, you just clean them right off. And I, I was, uh, well, you know, anytime you do something that thick, it's going to be a pain. Yeah. There's, there's just no two ways about it. That's why I didn't put two holes in this one. Uh, I'll pass it around because I want to show something about that. But uh, you can try and drill, but you're, you're not going to do anything, even on the thin one. <coughs> This is my makeshift drum holder. It's just like the one I have at home. Good. I didn't copyright or do anything for it. No. Uh, <laughs> this this tool's got one of the smaller birds you can get for a Dremel. Uh, I actually did a piece with the Dremel one time. two holes in this and when you do this it leaves a burn mark and I ain't crazy about it on some things some things it probably doesn't matter I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that uh, and see if we got enough air to do it <coughs> to get rid of the burn all you need to do is go in reverse you not to do what I did. So I made a base and I did that. The problem was I am way thick. This thing took me like seven hours. <laughs> but I wasn't going to come here empty handed. <laughs> okay. So anyway, this was a piece of elm and I didn't have any pattern in mind or anything like that. So 
I just took all the white area. These are beginning pieces that I'm doing, okay? Guys, I'm not the expert, but I'm just writing the on that. But these are just my beginning pieces, uh, and they're okay. You know, I'm, not, I'm not that disappointed in them. Things like that. Hey, Bill. What's, what's the biggest uh, ball bird they make on those, for that little bill? Oh, they make so many birds, I don't know what the biggest one is. Mm -hmm. You can go online and put dental bird chart, and I don't know, about fourth or fifth one down, it'll give you, it'll show you pictures of ball birds. Cut these bone when they yeah, get the the ball ball bird. Bird. Yep. I don't know, 125,000 diameter water for like, you know, know it's there. make a little the acorn, make an acorn texture. You just tap, tap, tap it. There is actually a kind of new enamel, which I mean, is different than bone. It's probably good. I don't know what size it is. It's actually in some ways harder. Uh, yeah. All that's more design, brittle. You know, like, sure. even the same style I've got for these are called. Say, I think about it. What? But they make them up. Why? There's no pain. Over 100,000. Not until you hit the nerve. So, the suit is the ball is also. Anyway, I, I made that one way too thick, guys. Like I say, it took about seven hours, and I'm just kind of guessing, but it was a long, long time. But I had to get something done, you know, in order to you know, do it. So you can make all kinds of patterns. So you have to do any sandy or anything in the stones? Or not, not in the home. <laughs> or I worked with those two pieces. The one I took the uh, burn mark out, it kind of smooths it around. That's one thing you get by, you know, removing that burn area. It'll kind of smooth it out and, I don't know, I like it without the burn better on that particular piece and, and probably on most pieces. You know, I wish I turned it a little bit thinner at the top. It's been a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Just so I got a little bit wow. more creative, <laughs> and I made a bow, and I got it a lot thinner. This didn't take near as long, maybe two hours or so. Uh, this is cherry. I'm a little bit thin right in there, probably about, you know, a little bit thinner I want you. I'm about where I want to be on, on the two tops and bottoms. <coughs> I've tried my wood burner, and I kind of messed that all up. But, uh, you don't really notice it too much because it's just like this. I'll go ahead and pass this one. From my wall of shame, or my shelf of shame, so called, I had some pieces that were actually turned thin. So what I want to do is give you an idea. You know, if you guys can draw, which I can't, you can draw like a flower and cut out around it. I've seen a lot of piercings like that, and then they'll go on and, you know, make other stuff. Uh, a lot of little flowers, uh, a lot of butterflies, you know, things like that, hmm. or just different designs. So I'm just doing the basics on these first two pieces I did. And like I say, this is from my shelf of shame. And then Dan, he said, you know, that'd be cool if you put a light behind it. So I did that one. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I did that one there with the light behind it. I just pierced you know, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that didn't, you know, that's good. like I said, it's my shelf of shame. And like I said, this one here, way too thick at the bottom, another one I messed up. But I just did kind of a little bit of design just to, so you could see what was, you know, I don't know what you can do. You can do a lot of things if you want to. Uh, the other, you can use these kind of dremels too. Probably they're, they're good because they don't get too hot. But the little handheld thing like that, which, I've had, I got another Dremel at home even. I don't know why I got so many Dremels, but uh, these kind of probably the best because uh, you, you've got a little bit more access. This works good though, because it doesn't get hot, but it only lasts about 20 minutes and then you're off doing something else with it. So you've got this kind. Like I said, I haven't used these flap sanders. Uh, that was if you got some marks that you drew with a pencil. 
around some of your uh, piercings and all that. So, that is what I have on piercing. I'm going to do uh, a little bit more. I'm going to, I, I tend to, uh, I use a lot of trans tint and I've been using some chest and stain. Now, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not expert on any of this stuff at all. But I'm going to show you what I know and you can go from there. Uh, and take it, you know, do what you would. So I'm going to unplug this. We're actually done with the compressor. If anybody wants to come up afterwards and we'll try one of these little tongue depressors, you're more than welcome uh, to do that. So we'll just unwrap this stuff a little bit. Like right, so this demonstration is kind of embellished. By the way, this is the thing I forgot. This yeah. is the thing that makes it all work. <laughs> so we don't drag it across the no, table. Nothing would have happened without it, really. Is anybody welcome if they want to try to pierce something? Let's see your verse. Let's see your verse. Verse? Sure. Let's pass them around. There's one of them. There's the other, other side. I use two main things. Mainly what I, what I like best is, is the trans tint dyes. And I had to put them in bags and write the colors on them because you can see they look alike. This stuff is, you know, you don't want to get it on you. It, it, when it says dye, it doesn't mean dye. You really only need to buy the basic colors because you can make any other color you want. Uh, it dyes wood well. I'm gonna do some samples on three different types of wood so you can see what it does. Uh, I, I, I use it a lot. Like I mean, this, this is trans tin. It's got brown and I made the green and it's got red. You know, I probably put a touch of black in the red. But anyway, I'll pass that around. So this is all maple except for uh, those are dowel rods and some, some hyper models. What's the difference between a trans tent and a stain? This is the stain. This is called the chestnut stain. Mm -hmm. The trans tent, I think, highlights the wood grain. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put some on each of these. You get this from Craft Supplies, about $9. You can get these at different places, about $20, $21. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's a bigger bottle. I don't know. When they sell you these bottles, they put a little red stopper in them, you know, for sealing. And they say remove it, but I don't remove it. I just punch a hole in it because I'm terrible at turning things over. <laughs> and I'd have the whole thing out there on the table. The one thing you can get out of a stain that you cannot get in transcend, and that is white. So now you can make different variations like I've made a gray on one of those little things to look more like a stone so anyway I'm gonna put three or four colors uh, the other thing about uh, dyeing I found out it's best to always put some uh, shellac on it just a little bit of shellac and I'll show you why uh, in a minute the, uh, uh, the woods pores and that dye will jump right through them pores. Uh, if you do a little wood burning, that'll help stop it, but maybe not all the way. So I'm gonna dye this one with the trans tint. Uh, you don't really have, you have the same problem with the stain, but not as much. But you know, I would still use the uh, 50, I use a 50, 50 shellac before I put it on there. So I'm gonna do those. I'm gonna put out. I'm going to use some black. <laughs> you don't need much of this stuff, believe me. 
I've had these bottles six, seven, eight, nine years. I don't know. I'm still using them. You know, I don't do a whole lot of dying either. So. Uh, the other thing is you can put them in these little spray bottles and be a poor man's uh, airbrush, I guess, <laughs> is what I call it. You know, $2 spray bottle. You mix those in, in alcohol? You, you can water? mix either one of them in alcohol or water. I generally use alcohol when I'm doing small areas, and but if I'm going to do a large area, I like water a little bit better because it makes it flow better on a large area for whatever reason. Alcohol dries much quicker than water. They all dry in about 15 minutes. Well, it did it a little bit. Went the opposite way. What I'm trying to show you here. I'm trying to show you here is if you don't have something on there like that, see how that jumped down there and went that way? That's what it'll do. I'll pass that around there for it dries for a minute. Now I'm going to take trans tent. I'm going to put it on a piece of maple. See the red bleeding out a little bit. Off of there. So that's why you know I really want. <laughs> Do you want us to try and confuse you, Bill? <laughs> you never know. You get over. So my my yellow is uh, this amber color. So 
I want red, blue, black, and amber on the trans temp, so I'll do the same on the uh, other one. Other than I got a white, I'll do it the end. So I want red. I think you get a brighter color with the uh, stain. Pass that around, you can really see it on these. Black. I don't see much difference in the blocks between them. Once you're finished, are you cleaning your brushes with water or with mineral spirits? Nothing. These are straight. Okay. I'll uh, I'll put some uh, alcohol in them and, and do a little bit more. I'll do it on like one of them. No, no. What I mean is brush cleaning. When you're say you're finished up painting a, a surface like that, you've got all, you've got about a half a dozen brushes there you've used or so. How do you clean those? Uh, I use uh, denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol. Okay. I messed up. White. It's trying to get a little yellow in there. It will make the the white. I got done the snowman. You almost have to do it two or three times to really get it to the white on on makeup. Can't hardly see the white like that. Now I'll take uh, uh, I must have got I got green on this one. It's supposed to be blue. I'm gonna take the blue. Kind of turned green on this shell, you know. It lights it up quite a bit. I don't pass these around. You can dilute them uh, and make them light and dark. It was dark is right out of the container, and that's what these are. These are right out of the container. Uh, they're still a bit wet. Leave them here, maybe. Come up and look at it. Yeah. That's basically what I got today, guys. I don't know what you were expecting. <laughs> this it works. Very good. They always say beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> That's right. So I hope I'll give you some kind of idea.